Today we're doing section 8-5 on uniform motion problems. We are solving word problems involving rate, time, and distance. Alright, vocabulary is distance, rate, and time, uniform motion, and we need the formula D equals RT. You're doing section 8.5, doing nine problems all at once at the first time will definitely take you too long, so I'm giving you two days and asking you to break it up. Do the odds one night, the evens the next. Okay. Let us get started. All right, so there's three type of situations when we're solving motion problems. There's where two people are going in the same direction. And in that case, whatever distance A goes is equivalent to the distance B goes. The other type of distance problem would be when two vehicles are traveling towards each other. The distance of A plus the distance of B is equal to the total distance of A plus B. All right, if you add up those two, it equals the total distance of C. And we have the same situation where they're traveling away from each other. So I've got the distance of A, the distance of B together makes the distance of C. This is the first time I'm teaching this without having students march this out in my classroom. You know? There's definitely going to be a part of this that will be difficult for me to explain. So let's all do our best to really stay focused. Okay, two ways to solve rate times time equals distance. We can solve it with one variable or we can solve it with two variables. So I'll show you both ways. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is with our boxes, on the left, what you're talking about is always what you're comparing. So in this case, two planes take off from the same airport at the same time. One travels east, the other west. West is 200 faster than the east. Find the speed of each plane if they are 2,000 miles apart. So the first thing I'm going to do is comp I'm comparing the east and the west. So that goes on the left. Okay. On the top, we're going <coughs> to write out our formula rate times time equals distance. And what I mean by this, I mean to multiply. So we are multiplying across. So we are going to fill in what we know. So let's get started. One plan travels east and the other travels west at 200 miles faster. So I don't know the rate. So I'm going to call this R. But this is R plus 200, right? Because it says west 200 faster than east. And then what do they mention about time? Find the speed of each plane if they are 2,000 miles apart after two hours. So we know that the time for both. Well, first of all, let's talk about what's happening. Two planes take off from the same airport. So I want you to do three things. We're going to draw it out. One plane travels east, and the other travels west 200 faster. So if they're, they're leaving at the same time, he's going to get more distance in, right? So this is one of those distance 1 and distance 2 is equal to the total distance, right? D1 plus D2 equals the total Okay, kind of like when we were going back on the last one, which was here, like the third example, travel away, A plus B. I called this distance one, I called this distance two, and this total distance, right? So it kind of create. we should be creating that type of an equation. So I want you guys all to kind of get used to sketching it out a little bit like that. 
you know, do that, make that little sketch and show us what's happening so you're making sense of it. So we know that this goes two and two. And we know that, that we're going to, we don't know the speed of the east, but we're going to call it r. And we're going to call the comparison of west, they said it's 200 faster than. So if I call that r. Oops, so let's go here. So I'm going to call this r, and this will be r plus 200. Now we mentioned that we multiply across. So this is going to be 2r, and this is going to be 2 times r plus 200. And just like I said to you before, when you draw that little diagram and you find out that this is distance one, which is faster, and this is distance two, that it equals a total distance. So in essence, we are calling two, isn't rate times time equivalent to distance? So it can be interchanged. We don't know the distance, but we can call it temporarily two r. And we don't know the distance of the west, but we can call it the rate times the time. And if we add these two up, distance one plus distance two, we will get a total distance. So I'm going to add a box here. And what is the total distance they are giving us is 2,000 miles. So there, my friends, is our, our equation. Let's see if they use R and... I'm going to use my R. Okay, let's see where they're going with this. They drew this. Okay, so here we go. So again, I'm using R. Just changing it out. It's a little bit neater that way. And so my equation is right here. 2r, 2r plus 2 times r, the quantity of r plus 2,000 is equal to, two, r plus 200 is equal to 2,000. So again, right here I'm doing distance 1 plus distance 2 equals the total distance, right? So now we've kind of done this with one variable, we can, let's see, I've got 2r, I'm going to distribute, plus 2r, plus 400, equals 2,000, and now I have 4r, plus 400, equals 2,000, subtract the 400, and we get 4r equals 1,600, divide by 4, divide by 4, and R is equal to 400. Okay, so if R is equal to 400, then the east plane is traveling at 400 miles per hour, and the west would be 600 miles per hour. So your answers would read east and I'm going to go back and double check. Find the speed of each plane. Okay. East is 400 mph, and west is 600 mph. Now, I like to use R so I know what I have when I find it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean. So, taking off my sweatshirt. Sorry. Um, that you have to use R. You'll see in my PowerPoint they used X, Y. It just makes it a little bit easier when there's so many unknowns. Okay, pause it if you'd like to take notes. Ah, there's a group of students that um, are probably in their senior year of college and they hijacked my computer one day after school and threw this into my slide. And I've never replaced it. 
All right, so here we are trying it with two variables, okay? Same question, two variables. I'm still comparing east and west. I'm calling it rate times time equals distance. We can fill in the time, right? Um, I'm going to call this, um, my rate is still going to be R, right? They're calling it X, sorry. And Y, they're calling the rates two different things. So we, I don't like solving it this way, so here we go. Let's, let's skip this. I guess we, we could have X plus Y. So we're creating this one sentence here, and then we create west, if west is y, we're using this as west is 200 faster than east. That becomes your second equation. So I still have distance one plus distance two equals the total. It's easier to create with, to solve with one variable. All right, let's try the next one. Karen lives, leaves for work, traveling at 50 miles per hour. 15 minutes later, Mark chases after her with her brief case, traveling at 70 miles per hour. So here's what's happening. Here's Karen. She leaves for work. 15 minutes later, he's traveling faster. Mark goes. So tell me about every time you do this, you have to say, is time, is distance, is rate the same? Okay? If this is her work, tell me about the time. Is the time going to be the same? Nope, because he left later and is traveling faster. Is the distance going to be the same? When he finally reaches her, it will in fact be the same. So that becomes something um, that we're going to need because they're in. So distance is the same. You might want to take the distance same. And then we said time. We said distance, now speed. We know the speed is different, okay? But distance being the same is going to be important. So let's start with Karen and Mark. And I'm lining it up. Rate times time equals distance. Well, we know that Karen's traveling 50 miles per hour and Mark is traveling 70 miles per hour. Okay, now time. You can do this. You can call them both T, right? And Mark is T minus 14, 15. Or actually, we have to go, wait, hold on, sorry. Go back, I'm trying to go back, go back, go back. Okay, so let's call this T, and this would be T minus 15. But because we are in miles per hour, you have to convert that 15 to how much of an hour? 15 out of 60 is one-fourth of an hour, okay? And so, we can do two things. Multiply across, multiply across, and we can say this equals distance since they're the same, right? So now I've got my 50t equals d, and I have 70 times t minus 1 fourth equals d, and I can do substitution. So here I go, let's go the other way around. Let's go this way. They're both going the same distance, so we can substitute it in. 50t equals 70 times t minus 1 fourth. 50t equals 70t minus 
4 goes into, 2 goes into that 32 times. Does 4 go into 70? No. So, I'm going to multiply and then I get 70 over 4. Just leave it at that. So, um, we have to get the t's all on one side. I'm going to subtract 70t, subtract 70t. And now I'm left with negative 20t equals negative 70 over 4. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. These will cancel, so we get negative 80t equals negative 7. I'm not sure why I'm not remembering this. Did I do something wrong? I'm not remembering this. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to divide by negative 80. I'm divided by negative 80, and t is equal to, I can reduce it, it's 7 eighths, but let's convert that to an hour. Remember, it's 7 eighths of an hour. 7 eighths of an hour, or we can convert that to a decimal. And if I'm <coughs> dividing out, 7 divided by 8 is 0 0.875. So t equals 0 0.875 of an hour. Since I'm in t, I'm calling it time, right? Since I called it t, it's representing time. So let's look at my PowerPoint. They're using x and y. It's the only difference. They did it pretty similar. Okay. The only difference, instead of calling it distance, they multiply it across. And since the distance is equivalent, they're setting them equal. Right? They're saying those are equivalent. Since they're saying, whereas I called it distance 1 and distance 2, and then sub distance 1 equals distance 2. Okay? And then they distributed. 70x, and they multiplied it out to a decimal. They subtracted the 70x, they divided both sides, and they got 0 0.875 hours. So same answer, they're using T and D. I suggest you use T, R, and D, so you know what you're finding. So if you want to convert it to minutes, um, you can take hours and multiply by minutes to hours, make a fraction of one, and then we would get 52.5 minutes. Okay, next one. On the left, what am I writing? So, what are we comparing? It would be the Joe and Lisa. So again, that's going to go on our left. Up top, we're doing Rate times time equals distance because we see miles, because we see speed, and we see hours. Now, Joe and Lisa are 44 miles apart and start biking towards each other. So we're going to drop this out. Joe is traveling six faster, so we're going to make his line a little bit bigger. Okay. This is Joe. This is Lisa. And this is going to eventually be an A plus B equals the total C. Or distance 1 plus distance 2. Distance 2 equals the total. Okay? So, they're 44 miles apart and they start biking towards each other. Okay? If Joe is traveling 6 faster, so that's a rate... We don't know their speed, so we'll call them R and R, and we'll call this R plus 60, plus 6, sorry. Okay. 
Joe's traveling six Pat and Lisa, and they meet in two hours. So what is the same? Is their speed the same? Is their distance the same? Okay, let's look. Is the distance the same? Let's look at the picture. If he's traveling faster, is and they both travel for two hours, is the distance the same? No. So if we know our distance isn't the same. Our time, if they're both traveling for two hours, yes, it's the same. Okay. And do we know the distance? No, but we do know that rate times time equals distance. We don't know the individual distances. The only distance we know is the total. And we put total distance down below. So that 44 would go here. So now we are going to multiply across because rate times time is interchangeable. So I've got two times r plus six. And here I have 2r, and so my equation becomes 2r, 2 times r plus 6 plus 2r equals 44. So I get 2r plus 12 plus 2r equals 44. It's 4r. Subtract 12. 4r equals 10, 28, dividing by 4, oh, why did I get that, let's see, 4 minus 2 is 2, oh, wait, that's wrong, so these are early morning, it's 2, and 4 minus 1 is 3, and so I get 4r, by 4 and r equals 8. So Lisa is traveling 8 mph and then 8 plus 6 is 14 miles per hour. So Lisa is doing 8 mph and Joe is traveling 14 mph. Now I'm going back. How fast was each traveling. So that's what I found. Just got to make sure that what I find is what they're looking for. All right, on to problem number three. Okay, wind and current problems. Kind of like of the motion, I think these are the easiest. Um, especially when you go on a plane, there's many times your, your wind and current problems are this, you have the same distance, so it makes things easier. Like you're traveling to Hawaii and back, you're traveling to New York and back. Okay. So a light plane flies 1200 miles with the wind in four hours, the return trip. So this is what's happening going somewhere and the return trip against the wind takes five hours okay same distance I'm going to school and back I'm going to Hawaii and back the difference is is the wind okay the return trip against the wind takes five hours the speed of the plane and still find the speed of the plane so we're looking for a rate speed is a rate so we're going to talk about, we have to name this, so let's call, talk about the with wind and against the wind. With wind and against the wind. Now, we're looking for this speed. We don't know what, let's call P the speed of the plane. I usually call this R. Okay, I'm going to call this R. I do my own, I know that they do it. So, with wind... Now, let's talk about what wind does to you. We've got a headwind and a tailwind. If the wind is at my face, what is it doing to me? If I'm walking into the wind, it's pushing me back. Okay, that's called a headwind. It's slowing me down. Okay? It's slowing me down in the headwind. Okay, I'm going against the wind. It slows me down. But if it's behind me, it's pushing me. It's making me go faster. It's kind of like um, 
in a lazy red river. Water works the same way. Water works the same way. If you're in a lazy river and you're going against the, the current, it's slowing you down. But if you go with the current, you barely have to do anything and it's pushing you. It's making you go faster. So with wind makes you go faster against the wind. With wind is called a tailwind. This is a tailwind. Oops, that should be an I. This is a headwind. Okay, so now it says, a light plane flies 1,200 miles with the wind in four hours. Okay, so the distance, it's not the together distance. It's going there, it's 1,200. The return trip, that implies it's the same trip. Okay. Against the wind takes five hours. This is five, this is four. Find the splay speed of the plane in still air and the speed of the wind. Okay, so the rate. Okay, with wind, it's going to be the rate of the plane plus the wind. But coming back, it's going to be the rate minus the wind. Okay? So now we have our two equations. R plus W times the quantity of 4, four times that quantity equals 1,200. Okay, let's see. We're going to need some space. Uh, 4 times R plus W equals 1,200. And then I have 5 times R minus W equals 1,200. Okay. recording for a minute. Let me go to the next page where there's space. Okay, here we go. So remember we're calling P instead of the plane. We're calling it R for rate. R. R. I'm just going R and R. Okay, so we have R. Now, um, only because 4, I can get rid of that 4. It's here. I'm going to divide both sides. And then I'm left with R plus W equals 300. And now when I divide this by 5, divide this by 5, I get R minus W equals 5 goes into 12, 240. Okay. Now we're set up for, for elimination because I've got two standard form equations. It would be, I'm going to bring this one over, right? R minus W equals 240. The W's cancel out and the rate is equal to 540. 2R two divide by 2, divide by 2, and R equals. 40 divided by 2 is 270. Okay, so got to go continue on. So my rate of my plane is 270. Um, are they asking for the rate or are they asking for the wind? I now have the ability to find the wind because all I have to do is substitute it in. 270 minus W equals 240. So now I'm getting minus 270, minus 270, negative W equals negative 30, and W is equal to 30. But I really do believe that the only thing they're looking for is the rate, and I'm going to go back to the original problem. So, oh, they did ask for both the speed of the wind and the rate. So find the speed of the plane in still air and the speed of the wind. So then, in fact, I do need to find both. Once we figure out what the rate is, 270, then we substitute it in. 
for the wind. I like to use, again, R for rate and W for wind. Okay, next one. Train leaves, Sherman Oaks. Oops. These are, are just... Uh... Okay. A jet ski flies downstream for 14 miles and 40 minutes. The return trip upstream takes one hour. Find the speed of the jet ski in still water and the speed of the river current. So we need the water and the speed of the ski. Now again, you know, I like to use R for the speed of the jet ski. And then we'll do for the um, and they want the speed of the current. So I usually use C for current. Okay, but here we'll use their, their variables. For you guys, I'd like you to use R for rate. Rate of the plane, of the train, whatever it may be. So, making my box, I'm comparing, we're doing a jet ski flies downstream for 14 miles in 40 minutes, and the return trip takes an hour. Now, why is the return trip taking an hour if it's going downstream for 14 miles? Does downstream mean it's going faster or slower? Okay, downstream, upstream. So, in fact, I'm going to name this downstream and upstream, right? So, is downstream faster or slower? What's happening when you go downstream? The water is pushing you, so you should be going faster. And upstream, you're going against the water. So, we know that the distance for downstream is 14 miles. When they say the return trip, that also is going to be 14 miles, right? same. Okay, downstream the time is 40 minutes and upstream it's an hour. I'm going to say 60 minutes, right? Or I might convert these to um, hours actually. Our distance is an hour, so one hour and 40 is two-thirds of an hour. Okay. Okay, so let's go to when you're going downstream, the the planes plane is going J is going R, right? Plus I'm sorry, I'm not gonna call it R because we'll go with these variables. The jet, jet's motor, and if you're going downstream, it's plus the river current. If you're going upstream, it's J minus the R, okay? And we know the time. We said it's 40 over 60, which would be two-thirds of an hour. And then it's one hour. Now, I'm converting this to hours because up here, our distance is going to be in miles per hour. It'll make it in miles per hour. We don't usually write mile, you know, miles per minute. Okay, so our distance is 14, they both equal 14, and so my two equations are as follows. Okay, I think I might try and get rid of that fraction because I will be able to get rid of the denominator, multiply both sides by 3 over 2. That's going to cancel. I'll, I'll have 2 goes into 2 once and into 14 7 times. 3 is 21. All right? Equals J plus R. And then the other one, there's no distributing, but we can now just line them up and do elimination. 2J equals 35 divided by 2. And J, the jet stream's rate, is 17.5. So now if we can find that here, we can find the speed of the river, and the river is 3.5 miles per hour. Okay, questions?
I said, that was some big problems. All right, so that's our lesson for the day.